Welcome to the Registered Investment Advisor Podcast, where financial services marketing expert Seth Green interviews experts, executives, and top producers to share can't-miss tips on how they successfully manage their financial service firms, grow their businesses, create great relationships, and influence the industry. And now, here's your host, Seth Green. Welcome to the podcast. This is your host, Seth Green. Today, I have the good fortune to be interviewing Maximal Nee of onogroup.com. Since 2005, Fine Wine has seen a growth of 198%, making it a very attractive safe haven for investors keen to diversify their portfolio. Ono is a pioneer in fine wine investment, trailblazing a path through under-the-radar fine wine regions and revolutionizing the way collectors interact with this unique market. Maxwell, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Seth. Appreciate it. Uh, let's go back in time. How, did, how, how do you get into the wine investment business? Great question. So I actually started in whiskey first and found wine later, and um, something happened. I had like a sort of catalyst that happened that sort of opened my eyes up to whiskey investment. Uh, I was in a bar in Chicago, sit down at the bar. It's a very, very swanky bar with my my good friend there. And uh, the bartender asked me, what would you like to drink? I say an old fashioned and he says bourbon or scotch. And I say scotch whiskey. And he says, look, would you like Macallan 12, Macallan 18? So the difference between these two scotch whiskeys is that the 12 is 12 years old and the 18 is 18 year old, uh, but it's the same liquid like literally the same liquid from the same year. Um, it's just that the difference of the 18 is that it's been sitting in a warehouse for six years longer, right? Now, I ordered the 18, I said, why the hell not? You know, I'm on holidays and um, I'm drinking, I'm drinking, it's delicious. I give it to my friend, he drinks half. It's the, He thinks it's delicious, he hates whiskey, but he loves it. And then what happens is um, I asked the bartender, I said <laughs> to the bartender, how much was this again? And he said, 125. And I said, no, 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 no not the tab, how much is this drink? And he said, 125. <laughs> so then my friend starts laughing at me and I'm like, whoa, I just put 125 US dollars plus tip for a drink. And then I realized, um, and then I said, how much was the 12? And he said, 25. And then in that moment, a light bulb went off. So it's like, wow, six years of aging equals a 500X return you know, on the top end, right? Now, if you bought a house in New York, you bought a house in San Francisco, you bought a house in Sydney, Australia, you bought some stock shares or whatever, would you get 500% in six years? You know, it's pretty hard to beat, right? So that's what opened my eyes to it. And that's that's how I sort of uh, moved into the industry. So that makes sense in terms mm-hmm. of, holy cow, you're realizing there's a huge price difference. How does one, a lot of people might experience that, wow, that's expensive for a drink. But how did you then take the leap to, I'm going to A, invest in these, and then B, make that available for others? And then we'll talk about the transition to wine. Great question. Yeah, so it's just the old Google search, you know? So I was Google searching whiskey investment companies, whiskey investment firms. And what I quickly found is that there's not a lot. You know, there's only a few sort of top players in the space, um, mainly because the access to get access to these goods is very, very hard. Like the supply of these goods are in the hundreds of thousands, not in the millions. Um, so the access is very, very hard to get. So there's not any, a few people that have the access in, in many ways. Um, so all the companies that uh, I basically tested a majority of companies. I came on as a client. I said, I put down five grand, 10 grand, and just sort of waited, saw how I, you know, assisted the service and stuff from the outside. And then eventually I found Ueno, uh, of which I was very, very happy with their service. Um, so that, that's like my due diligence process. You know, I don't become a, a real estate investment, you know, guru without buying some real estate first. So I basically went through that process. And then how did you make the transition from whiskey to wine? Yeah, so um, Aweno specializes in wine. So I, I jumped into whiskey first and then I realized, oh, you know, wine makes sense as well. You know, wine ages in the bottle. The old saying ages like fine wine, da, 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 da. You know, you could look at a, a fine wine list at a restaurant and look at a wine that's the same wine, but just a vintage is one year apart and you'd see a price difference right there before your eyes. So um, I always knew that existed, but I didn't know how to get access into the space. And then I found Aweno as a client. Uh, we tested the relationship and got to know each other a little bit. And then I said, look, guys, I, I want to come in. I want to come in and do two things. I want to bring fine wine and whiskey investment to Australia. because That's where I'm from. Um, of which I'll do that remotely, but uh, that's where my network is. And I know that we don't have this in Australia. 
And also I want to bring fine wine and whiskey investments to the world uh, by way of an investment fund. So that's uh, what we're doing right now. I'm currently in Miami uh, meeting investors for our wine and whiskey investment fund. Oh, that is absolutely fascinating. So tell us a little bit about what Ono does. Great question. So um, it's really, really simple. You know, if you think about it like this, you know, what we don't do is we don't buy wine and whiskey and hope that it goes up in price. That's pretty heavily speculating. What we do is think about if a bottle is worth $100 today, I want you to imagine that we get access to that bottle five years earlier, say at like 40 cents, $40, 40 cents on the dollar. And um, we hold it, age it, make sure it's aged perfectly, perfect lighting, humidity, um, temperature conditions. And then we wait, we wait and hold it until the market has no more left in the market, but all the restaurants and hotels and, and drinkers want to drink it. Then we bring it back into the market and sell it back into the market at a premium when supply is scarce. How are you sourcing inventory? How do you go around buying up cases of you know, McAllen 18. That's the hardest part. So um, our wine and whiskey acquisition team, which is also a fundamental analysis team, essentially, they have 80 plus years of industry experience between about the four or five of them. And those experience go back 25 years. So to do what we're able to do to have the access, the relationships and everything, it's all very, um, the wine and whiskey industry is very, you know, you, you'll rarely find a public company in the wine and whiskey industry. You know, it's still very, um, traditional and sort of family owned might be within its fifth or sixth generation so you've got to have the relationships and um you know we've we've built together a team that love what we do love the company and uh, are passionate about helping our investors make a great return um of which there's you know like i said many of those relationships started 25 years ago absolutely now um does that you mentioned about the aging does that mean that You've got a warehouse somewhere where all of this inventory is stored and curated and monitored and all that good stuff? Yeah, great question. So the UK, especially in London, is like the, the Hollywood, you know, like the, the biggest stage for wine and whiskey in the world. Like every wine and whiskey maker wants to be on the menus of the best restaurants in London because that's where the big drinkers are and the appreciation of aficionados and that sort of thing. So there's a there's a gold standard of um, storage in London called London City Bond. There's like gold kept there, jewelry's kept there, diamonds kept there. I think the Queen keeps some of her some of her goods there as well. Are oh, the King now? Sorry. So we keep all of our wine there. That's the industry standard essentially. And then obviously we're not making a solicitation to invest on the podcast, but when someone invests with you, like are there minimums? How does that, is it a limited partnership? How does that work? And then what do they quote unquote get for their money? Yeah, great question. So uh, the fund is structured um, in a Delaware limited partnership and it's a very, very simple setup. It's a close-ended fund, a uh, five-year lockup with everything at the end, a bit like a private equity fund. And the reason why people ask, you know, why five-year lockup, you know, that, that's a long time or whatever. I'm like, remember, you know, the, the real value is in the aging. You know, we could get 70 to 80% uplift in these assets if we age them within the right timeline, the right time horizon. And that's what we do. So we pick the we pick the optimum time horizon for our investors that might be over two, three years. Then we bring the assets in, then we start to exit them direct to consumer because we have a vertically integrated pipeline. Um, we're actually the only wine and whiskey investment firm that has a vertically integrated pipeline. So we sell directly to the person actually going to drink it so that our investors get the best margin. And I'll give you an example, you know, in 2021, I'm still getting the numbers of 2022, but we delivered 15.87% um, for our investors in that year for everyone that had their own private wine collections with us. And that's across about 80, 80,000, 80 million, sorry, US dollars. Well, that's an incredible rate of return, especially something that's not necessarily correlated to the stock, to the stock and bond markets. So if I heard you right, so you're eventually liquidating the portfolio and selling directly to consumer. You're not selling to wholesalers, restaurants, liquor stores. You're going to John Smith who wants a bottle of 25-year-old scotch. Yes, that's correct. Um, how are you marketing then the aged product to resell it? Yeah, so we were actually the only wine and whiskey investment firm that has a fine wine bar in London. And we sell e-commerce as well and also a rare whiskey bar. So there's that. We also have a list of about 3,000 plus uh, collectors and drinkers 
that we've built our business so um that's been the bread and butter of our business since 2015. So there's multiple forms of exit. You know, we also have an exchange coming out this year where our investors and collectors can trade between each other if they want to sell, if they want to buy, if they want to drink. It's, you know, you got to remember these assets, they are assets you celebrate with, you know, good times and bad times, right? So every year there's 8 billion birthdays on the planet. Every year there's hundreds of millions of weddings on the planet. You know, every year there's hundreds of million wedding anniversaries on the planet. You know, there's people flying business class for the first time, going to that, you know, five-star hotel that they haven't been at for about more than a year. What's the first thing they serve? You know, whiskey, champagne, wine, all that good stuff. So there's a, as a population, we have a habitual consumption habit for these assets. So that's what drives the demand. Absolutely. Now, how does it work in terms of, I don't know how, whether it's a Reg CF or whatever, or Reg A or whatever type of offering it is. Are you, for example, are there rules on, you can only take accredited investors or, you know, how does that, who's an ideal investor for you? Yeah, uh, exactly that. So accredited investors. So for the investment fund, it's accredited investors. Um, for, if you want to build your own private wine portfolio, that's actually open to everyone. Like that's a we're just essentially helping you to buy wine that happens to be investment grade. So we're like a uh, an advisory business in terms of that. But yeah, so for the Delaware Fund, really simple, five-year lockup, everything at the end. You know, um, the industry does about, on average, has done about 8 to 10% per year for about the last 50 years. Um, you know, we did, we're sort of in the mid-teens in terms of our past performance and um, accredited investors only. And so you've got both a done for you, which is the fund. I write a check. You go buy the, you go do all the work and I get my return almost as if I were investing in a, you know, stocks, bonds or something else. It just happens to be whiskey or wine. And then there's a done by myself, like done with me version, which is the, I want, I don't want to write a check and have a portfolio, have shares. I want the 27 bottles of really cool stuff on my, in my cellar, in which case they can pay you for advice on what we should buy that you believe is going to appreciate. Is that, did I get that correct? Yeah, that's correct. But even the done with you, um, a lot of our clients prefer for us to fully manage that. So, you know, we'll store it in the gold standard of storage. We'll help them to exit it if they like. Usually they decide to bring it into their own possession at the end, like five, six, seven years from now. Like the biggest question we get asked also from fund investors as well is, hey, look, if I, you know, don't really need the money, could I rather liquidate by taking out the bottles and taking them home and drinking them? And of course, the answer is always yes. So that, that's our most common FAQ. Consumable inventory. Absolutely. Well, um, it sounds like you built a fascinating business. Your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you're doing? Yeah, I love the fact that we're solving a real problem. You know, we're solving a real problem for investors because, we're, you know, with fine wine and whiskey, we're able to provide, you know, all the good stuff, capital preservation, um, you know, inflation beating yields, you know, we're able to generate some arbitrages that can go into a little bit more if someone wants to book a call or speak to me. Um, but also, uh, we're also solving a real problem for the industry because with the investment fund, as an example, we will have all the best stock in the world all in one place. And that's very, very, that makes us very, very attractive to deal with from like a big hotel bearing, a big restaurant brand, you know, instead of them having to go to four or five different merchants to get like these speciality wines or whiskeys, they could just come to us. It's all in one place. And we can be very patient sellers as well. Like we don't need to buy, sell anything like auction houses. Uh, we can hold the stock as long as we need to, because while we're holding it, it's appreciating in value and our investors are getting a great return. Beautiful. Well, for our folks who are watching or listening and are interested, where is the best place for them to go to learn more? Great question. So um, O-E-N-O, winewhiskeyfund.com is probably the best place. Um, if that's a little bit hard to capture, I can send you the, the link. Uh, my name is Maxwell Nee. I'm very active on LinkedIn. So if you just send me uh, requests and things like that, I I'll respond um, pretty much the same day. Awesome. Well, we will make sure to put that link in the show notes. You know, we don't, we know your time's incredibly valuable. We greatly appreciate you spending some of it with us. This has been Seth Green with Maxwell Nee from Ono, um, onogroup.com. Um, Max, thanks again for joining us. Nice. My pleasure. Thanks, Seth. Thanks everybody for watching or listening. We will talk to you or see you next time. Cheers.